Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 on a Hyper-V virtual machine. So Hyper-V comes standard with you know, the Windows Server operating systems, and if you have Windows 10 Pro, then you could uh, use Hyper-V on that as well. I just did a video on how to configure the Hyper-V manager for Windows 10 Pro, because it could be a little tricky when you uh, enable it, and then you can't find the icon to start, and there's a little trick to how to get around that, so you might want to check that out if you're having problems. And then also Windows 11 is not officially out yet, so you could still download the ISO and install it yourself and, you know, get a feel for it before it actually comes out. We also have a video on how to download that ISO file as well. But anyway, so we're in Hyper-V Manager, so we're going to right-click and go New Virtual Machine. We're going to call this Windows 11, and we're going to pick a different location here. I have a folder for my Hyper-V VMs. And then Next. And then we're going to stick with the Generation 1 just to, you know, for backwards compatibility here, just to make sure we uh, get things working properly. Now this uh, assigned memory, so this is the startup memory. It's not how much memory the virtual machine is going to have. So it's the dynamic memory option will kind of adjust it based on its needs. So this is the minimum memory it will start up with. But we'll just change that to approximately 6 gigs just to make sure we don't have any problems here. You could try out different numbers for yourself there and see how it works. And so for network connection, I only have one choice here, the default switch, which will use the networking connection or internet connection of my host computer that I'm running Hyper-V on. So, and then for the hard drive size, we don't need that much. We're going to go for 40 since this is just a test. And you could attach an existing hard disk if you have it. So we're going to click on Next. And then we need to install an operating system from an image file, ISO file. So I have the uh, Windows 11 ISO file there. So we just have to mount that. And then Next. And so it gives us our summary here and then finish, and then we'll create the VM. So now we have it here, so we could just double click it, open it up, click on start to start it. And so it looks like it found the ISO file here. And it looks like the screen resolution is a little too big here. Okay, so you, this kind of looks like the Windows 10 screen here if you're used to installing Windows 10, so you pick your language, click Next, click on Install Now. So obviously I don't have a product key since it's not even out yet. That kind of looks like Windows 10, and this even looks like the Windows 10 screen. You could pick your different versions. Let's go for Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. Accept the license agreement. So this is a new installation, so we're going to pick the 40 gigs. We'll just use the whole hard drive there. Okay, so now it's copying files, so this might take a minute, so I'll probably pause the video for this. Okay, so everything's complete. We'll go ahead and reboot. And of course, we don't want to boot from the CE again because we don't want to start the installation over. Okay, rebooting once again. So this Windows 11 installation so far seems to take longer than Windows 10, but who knows what the final version will be like. So I'm editing this video so you're not sitting here staring at the spinning circle for 20 minutes, so it is taking a lot longer than it's going to show in the final video. All right, so we're finally getting to a new screen here. And this is where it's going to start looking different than uh, Windows 10, a little more cartoonish looking. I guess that's how they uh, want to do it these days to make it look like it's modern. So you're going to pick your country. And 
and then your keyboard layout. And then we're going to skip adding a second keyboard layout. Checking for some updates. All right, so now here's where it wants you to set up for personal use or set up for work or school. So if you're going to you know, connect to your school network or your work domain, you could pick this option. But since I'm testing one at, you know, for personal use, I'm going to choose this option. So now here's where it wants you to put in your Microsoft account email address or phone number to, to log in with. And so I'm going to pick a uh, different sign-in option here. And I'm going to use an offline account, so just a name and password. And so it's bugging you again to use a Microsoft account, so I'm going to skip that. But of course, you could use your Microsoft account if you want it linked to your account and your, your other computers. So let's call, let's, let's log in as admin. So it's even still trying to prompt you to use an online, online account. Okay, password, password again. Now this makes you ask some, uh, answer some security questions. So let's just make some stuff here. First pet's name, Rover. What city were you born in? New York. And still trying to bug you to use your online account. Uh, nickname, let's say Timmy. Okay, so now some privacy settings. You could, you know, play with these. I always like to turn these off because Microsoft doesn't need to be taking information from my computer or sending me ads, that kind of thing. So we'll accept that. Checking for updates once again. Okay, so now you're at a uh, Meet Windows 11 screen. So if you want to kind of go through this little slideshow here and get some ideas of what's going on. And so it kind of shows you this while it's uh, doing some updates here. So now we'll have to wait for this update to finish before we could continue here. So we also did a video on the uh, Windows 10 compared to Windows 11 uh, comparison, you know, for things that are the same, things that are different, so you could look for that video as well. It's kind of like a side-by-side -side comparison if you're interested. So we'll just wait for this and we'll be back again. Okay, so the updates are done, so it looks like we're going to be rebooting again. Okay, so now it's going to be going through this getting things ready for you type of screen that you're used to seeing on Windows 10 when you first reboot after the installation is complete. This might take a few minutes, so it's going to take more than a few minutes. So, so far this is taking longer than it did when I installed it on uh, VMware Workstation and also on VirtualBox, so I don't know if anything's changed since then or if it's just something to do with Hyper-V, but this is quite the lengthy installation. Okay, so now Hyper-V is wanting me to change the resolution here to see if it'll make it look better. Leave it as is. Okay, so now we need to sign in here. It looks like we're going to have to do something about the screen resolution too. Okay, let's see if we could change this. All right, for some reason, Windows is thinking this is a remote session instead of going through the console. So let's close this out here. 
and try and reconnect. Okay, so I guess with the Hyper-V, it's not going to work quite the same as with VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. So it's trying to do like a remote desktop connection rather than just access it through the console screen. So let's try full screen and see what happens here. Okay, so that's better. So, All right, so as you can see, you have your new Windows desktop and things are kind of different. You have a different taskbar down here and your start menu is actually right here. And you have all your pinned apps and you can see all your apps. It's kind of like with the uh, Windows 10 listing. And then you have, you know, different features down here, your browser and this kind of thing. And so anyway, so I'm not going to go over the... Uh, features here because you could check out the other video that we did for that so yeah this was quite the uh, installation took some time so if you plan on doing this in Hyper-V you know set aside like an hour to get it configured and like I said it seemed to go faster in VMware Workstation and VirtualBox but I don't know if anything's changed since then because you know I did that installation a little while ago and you could actually check out those videos as well so try it for yourself and see how it works for you all right thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe <laughs>